Hello, community. Today we look at agents that re-evaluate the past and redefine the future. So, we want to talk about a truly interactive dialogue agent that is kind of a conversational genius when talking to humans. No? And it should be able to guide you someone through challenging situations and even have some empathy. Now, there are some unique challenges, and it's based here on the contextual continuity, on the goal alignment, and on a new efficiency in learning. Let me show you this. We have two brand new publications by UC Berkeley. The first one is on hindsight regeneration. So this is a method that enables agents to learn from past conversation by rethinking the strategy that were applied here to reach the long-term goals. And the second one looks into the future. And we have your Q learning, but now we are a supervised fine-tuning approach to optimize the strategic planning capacity in our agent without the complex architectural changes to our vision language model for robotics or our large language model for a human conversation. Here you have the both new paper, both published November 7, 2024. Here you have the archive link for both of them. University of California, Berkeley, we have the same lead author and Serge Levine was here, the mastermind behind. You see here, it is about re-evaluating the past and predicting the future. And I will combine both paper because I think they just belong together. So with this new supervised fine-tuning idea, we are now transferring the classical reinforcement learning task of learning here the long-term strategy, like in Go with Google here, into a much more familiar supervised fine-tuning approach that our language model and our vision language model can handle naturally. So this is a beautiful reduction of complexity. We go from the reinforcement learning and we try to integrate it into the supervised fine-tuning amazing amount of reduction of computation. Now, let's come back. Our main job is here to have these beautiful geniuses of AI agents, and we have to ask why the current dialogue AI agents fall short. Now, normally they just immediate, they optimized here for the immediate reply without considering here the long-term goal, the long-term goal in a conversation. Plus, it depends here the lack of a long-term strategy. It is just a very short-term, 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 like the LLM itself, just predicting the next word. Now we have to change this. Imagine a coach now watching here a game replay, analyzing each move and strategizing what could have been done better if they wanted to have a win. Hindsight regeneration does more or less the same. It allows the AI dialogue agents to do just that, to revisit the previous conversation, examine in detail the responses, and learn in retrospect which might have better worked. This is great. Simulating now alternative responses, reward optimization to handle future multi turn dialogues much more effectively. Real world application UC Berkeley gives us here, they have here a study on mental health counseling. And in mental health counseling, they argue you have to be sensitive. And if you have an AI agent doing this, you have to focus here on the long term goal. It is not about a, converse, a short conversation with a human, but you want to build something up that in the end the human feels much better. Also, they have another real world application. Charity persuasion, <laughs> which I found especially interesting. So whenever now <laughs> you receive an email for and ask for a donation, now you will have an interactive AI arguing with you. <laughs> if you want to have a little bit of the mathematics, if you're not familiar with this, here we have it. In order to run here an offline reinforcement learning, we need to post-process the data set of dialogues into a reinforcement learning training examples. And yes, you know the Bellman recurrences. I hope you are familiar with this. Now, the second paper is even more interesting. I think that this is the beautiful one. Now, this Q learning for language models via the supervised fine-tuning methodology, embedding, so embedding here the strategic thinking within the supervised learning. 
Now, you know that traditional reinforcement learnings like the Q-learning have been used, and I have multiple videos on this, to teach the agent here the long-term strategy in games and especially robotics for vision language action models. But applying this to the language model introduces yet complexity. So Q-learning would need here an additional layer, additional architectural changes here to the transformer and complex calculation to predict to the long-term rewards, our Q values, our quality values. And we don't want this. We want to have a faster, sleeker, much more tighter integrated learning. Now, the trick is simple. This QSFT ingeniously sidestep here this complexity by reframing now the Q learning as a supervised fine-tuning problem where the language model probabilities directly represent Q values. It sounds so easy, but mathematically it's a little bit tricky. But essentially it teaches you the model to treat each probability as a goodness score. How good is this? That estimates how helpful each choice is for reaching a goal over the conversation, having in focus here your particular long-term goal. How it works? We have now a weighted cross-entropy loss. Model is trained with a weighted cost of the loss functions, where the weights come from the Q values calculated from the previous dialogue. So this model and model learns which responses not only fit the context, but also help in achieving here the long-term goals. And the beauty, I mean, the real beauty is there's no need for architectural modifications. UC Berkeley gives us here a scenario like an e-commerce support where our QSFT allows you the custom support agent to balance here relevance with persuasion. So the agent uses here the learned goodness course to suggest responses that are both contextually relevant to the human request and lead to a higher probability of closing the sale. This now increases, if you want, the social intelligence here of our AI agents if we can do this here without changing here the architecture within the supervised fine-tuning methodology. I had an hour-long conversation here with my chat GPT for Omni and I will then ask here for a write-down and I give you here just a mathematical formulation. So for the weighted cross-entropy of the Q values here, then calculating the weights, incorporating the conservative Q learning. But I think the real interesting part here is theoretical analysis of QSFT. And we have here the convergence properties, the performance bound algorithmic step and the benefits as done by ChatGPT for Omni. Because, yeah, short warning, this is not immediately what you get when you just put in these papers. You have to have a discussion. You have to focus on certain parts, argue about what is connected to what and 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 so careful you don't get this immediately just input it in you have to work with your chat gpt for omni in my case here that you have then a formulation that is helpful and by combining these two new methodologies our dialogue agents now achieve both a strategic planning from our qsft and an adaptive resilience having learned from the past conversation, from this hindsight regeneration, meeting their body demands of a complex goal-driven interaction between AI and human. So we move now closer to a, a more socially intelligent AI agent that is both strategically intelligent with the new training methodology and contextually adaptive, having analyzed all these hundred or maybe thousand conversations of the past and finding the right path to convince the customer to purchase a specific item or whatever is the topic. So therefore, capable of guiding here the conversation with finesse. And I love this word that a theoretical scientist would write, finesse. Here now at the end, also I want to show you what is currently ChatGPT4 Omni able. And after an hour long discussion here, I asked ChatGPT4 Omni to provide me from my discussion I had with it here a table. So comparison of the traditional Q learning methodology and the Q learning via supervised fine tuning. And I was honestly surprised, and this is the reason why I want to show you this, if you work with this system, if you have interaction, if you have exactly what we are talking about, this 
intelligent, more intelligent AI system from the conversation. Look, this is what we get. We have here in the aspect, then we have the traditional Q learning. And now we compare it with the new Q learning via supervised fine tuning methodology. So let's start. The first one is beautiful. Our model architecture of our LLM and VLM would require for the Q learning additional new value function heads. In the new methodology, no architectural changes are needed. Second point. The model maintains here distinct outputs for the policy probabilities and distinct from the Q values. This is not the case anymore with our optimized methodology. Computational complexity. This involves complex calculation for the complete Bellman updates and the regression to target here the Q values. And in the training process, we have separate stages for the policy evaluation and the policy improvement. And this is not the case for both in our Q learning via supervised fine tuning. Stability. The classical method can suffer from instability due to bootstrapping efforts and the divergence of Q value estimates. This is not happening in the new model. In the new model here, if we integrate this, we fully leverage the knowledge of the pre-trained model, LLMs and VLMs. We have no catastrophic forgetting if you want. Plus, we have a lower complexity here. We have a simplified Q learning into a supervised learning methodology integrated. So I think a real brilliant new approach, unfortunately, it was just published two days ago. So the code was, as far as I know, has not been published yet by UC Berkeley. I hope they will publish it soon. In any case, if you subscribe to my channel, I will notify you of the new code in the community tab of my YouTube channel. This is it for today. I hope you found it interesting, maybe new insights. And it would be great to see you in my next video.